Thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. Last week we did a test, an autofocus test, uh, using the Canon C70. And we used a variety, actually a lot of different prime lenses. EF lenses, in other words, lenses that were adapted to the Canon C70. The follow-up test is what we're doing today. And today we're going to be covering three different lenses. Because these are the only three that I actually have access to. Because they're the only ones that I own. And these are going to be RF lenses. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try and see how the autofocus performs on the Canon C70. Specifically, we're going to take a look at autofocus tracking, face priority versus face only. Right? So the three lenses that we're going to use are this 35 millimeter. So it's a macro lens, RF lens. And here I'll show you guys a close up. Hopefully this focuses properly here. So this is the 35 millimeter macro, very small lens, very compact, very, very, very sharp lens. The second lens that we're going to take a look at is, it's one of my favorites, and it's also the biggest of the bunch. So this is the 15 to 35 RF lens image stabilized. This is the reason why I like it. This is the 24 to 105, so you can see how much bigger it is. And when you compare it to this little tiny 35 millimeter, it's very, very small. But the best part about this lens is really the focal length, right? So you can go all the way from 15 all the way to 35. It's image stabilized, makes it really, really nice for handheld work. I really, really like this lens. This might be one of my all time favorites. And it has a pretty fast aperture, which is something that I really like about this lens. So yeah, this is one of my favorites. The third lens that we're going to go over is what I showed you before, the 24 to 105. It's got a huge focal length. It's a little bit slower. It's an F4. But this F4 is, it's a little bit of magic. Um, just because of how sharp it is, just because of how useful it is. And I think you're going to see why it is that I really enjoy using this lens. This is also image stabilized, which of course adds to the stabilization of the actual camera and the capabilities of the camera. So we're going to go in order. In the previous test, I broke each video down into its own lens. For this video, we're going to do all three. So if you're interested in skipping around, just know that the first one we're going to cover is the 35 millimeter. The second one we're going to cover is this 15 to 35, and then the last one we're going to cover is the 24 to 105. If you're one of those people that just doesn't really want to sit through the entire test and want to see how each of the lenses performs, and you just want to hear my thoughts, then here are my thoughts. RF lenses versus EF lenses. RF lenses perform better on the Canon C70 with autofocus tracking, face only, and face priority. They just do. Out of the three lenses that I own, which one is my absolute favorite? The 24 to 105 f4. And yes, it is a slower lens, but what the f4 gives me the ability to do, and how well, in my opinion, face tracking and face priority work with the 24 to 105 makes it my favorite lens out of these three. All three performed well. All three, in my opinion, performed better than the EF version or the adapted versions. And why is that not surprising? Simply because these are brand new lenses. They're new lenses, right? Newer lenses. Which means they have newer technology that is made to work with their newer cameras, like the Canon C70. So that's not surprising. EF lenses performed well in a lot of cases. But these lenses, in my opinion, outperform them. So if I'm going, if I'm the type of person that is going to rely on autofocus for my projects, or I'm shooting one-man band, and I need a B cam, and I need to know that the B cam is going to perform because I can't be next to it manning it, then RF lenses are going to be the lens of choice. Why am I picking the 24 to 105 over the 15 to 35 as my overall favorite out of these three? It's simple, the focal length, right? If I am stepping into a scenario where maybe I didn't have the opportunity to scout the location 
or I'm in a corporate type of environment where I don't know exactly what it is I might I might expect or how much room I might have to work with, the 24 to 105 gives me the most flexibility out of the three simply because of the wide focal length. Now, you might say the C70 is a super 35 camera, which really means that the 15 millimeters is going to give you a better field of view, wider field of view, if you need something that wide. And I would say you're absolutely right. But I still, if I can only pick one to bring with, and I'm going to have it work on the C70 as my B cam, I still personally would go with the 24 to 105 because I still feel that it gives me that much more flexibility. So without further ado, let's jump in and check out the test and let me know what you guys think. Okay, so we're going to get started and we're going to take a look at face only first. And again, this is on the 35 millimeter macro, which is a prime lens. And you'll notice I left all the icons up so that you can see what the camera was actually monitoring. But every time that I step into, you know, into position, the AF little icon lights up. So it's recognizing me fairly quick and you can see what the performance is when I go in and out of the camera's focus or the camera's out of focus range. So watch how fast it actually picks me up. Now this is a macro lens. My expectation was that it was going to automatically and quickly lock in. I did not adjust the autofocus speed settings. So I left it at the default settings. And that's important for you guys to know because with Canon cameras, we have the ability to adjust the speed at which it, you know, racks focus or, or catches the focus. And here you're noticing that the lens is not picking up my face. And now finally here, it did in fact catch it. One thing else to note is that with people like me who are bald, <laughs> right? We shave our heads. Um, it does create a little bit more of a challenge because I find that with um, females, for example, that have long hair, it's much, the, the autofocus performance is just much, much better. Now watch what happens here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to engage the macro side of the lens. And then as I step away after it did in, in fact catch my focus, look at how long it's going to take for it to go from macro to back to recognizing my face and switching back. Now, I didn't really expect for there to be that big of a delay, but it appears that when I forced the lens to go into the macro mode, it kept expecting or looking for something that was close up to focus. But now as I walk away, look at how fast it is in fact tracking me. So maybe that is just a setting or a limitation of the lens where when I'm going, you know, switching from a macro length to a longer length or further away from the lens, that the lens actually takes a moment to catch up. But once it does catch up, here you'll see how quickly it picks up my face again, and then it locks into focus. So I thought that that was actually really interesting and, you know, good to know. I don't expect that I'm going to be at an event where I'm trying to use face tracking and someone is going to put the lens into macro mode, but I thought it would be worth mentioning. And as you can see here, it locks in and it's not trying to hunt or anything, and which of course is a big upside and a plus. And there I'm going to call it good. We're going to switch over. Just give me, here we go. Go from face only to face priority. And as I make this change, now what I'm going to ask you guys to notice is that same example, right, where I said when I put the lens into macro mode and then go back out, you know, to a further away distance, you're going to see a significant difference. But also, look at how quickly it, in fact, will find my face and then essentially lock into it. I thought that that was actually really good. It's a very nice speed. And again, these are the default settings, so that's keep that in mind. 
you have the ability to control how fast. Look at how it's even tracking my head even though I turned around. I think that that's also really important if you're working on anything with live events. Now, look, I'm going to pop back up here in a second and you'll see there it is. It, you know, it's not instantaneous, but again, default settings. I'm not trying to go for the fastest switch. I'm just using what the camera's default settings are. And it doesn't matter if I have an object in front of me, it still finds me, tracks me. And now let's go into the macro mode. So I'm basically, my nose is just about to touch the lens in this shot here. And let's make sure that it gets my eye in focus. There it is. And now let's see how quickly it finds me again. As you saw when it was face only, it took a moment. But in face priority, it was much faster. So we just looked at the performance of the 35 millimeter RF prime lens. I'm impressed by what this little lens is able to do simply because of the price point at which it comes in and how small it is compared to all the other lenses. So I feel like this lens absolutely, absolutely belongs in my camera bag whenever I'm working on a project and the C70 is coming with me or the R5 for that matter because this little lens is fast and it is accurate and it is sharp and I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm just I'm impressed by what that lens can do. So now let's take a look at the 15 to 35. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the 15 to 35. And what I chose to do here is only use the 35 millimeter focal length um, because I was very curious to see how it was going to perform against the actual 35 millimeter prime. And you can see here that I stopped the less lens down to 3.2. And the main uh, Reason for that is I needed to try and get the correct exposure and this is what worked out the best because my head was spinning from the previous test as I did all these back to back of course. But overall what you're going to see here is that this lens performs really well and this is face priority and I, I just like the speed of this lens. I like how it locks in and you'll, you're going to notice as I walk around the light bulb here, it lost me there a little, but it was simply because I stepped away from the actual um, dual pixel autofocus area of the sensor. But as long as I'm within that area of the sensor, it will pick me up, it will focus, and it's focusing a lot faster than the 35 millimeter prime. And I think that that's also important if that's something that is interesting or it's needed in your type of workflow. So, you know, maybe wedding guys or people that are doing live events, this is probably going to be a better option over the actual prime. You know, assuming you don't need the fast aperture of the 35 millimeter prime, of course. But overall, this focuses, as I mentioned, a lot faster. Look at this. As I step forward, it does such a good job of tracking me and I'm moving a good probably meter, so about three feet or so um, on some of those and look at, it's just, it just sticks with me. I'm like, this is one of the reasons why this is a very good lens and one of my favorites because it is sticky, right? The autofocus on face priority is sticky and it is fast and it is not annoying. So let's switch over and take a look at face only so that we can determine what those differences might be but you know i'm going to spoil it and just let you know that this lens performs exceptionally well it just does and for whatever reason to me it feels as if in the default settings you know for autofocus default settings on the camera face priority many times outperforms face only. And I don't know if that's because face only is maybe intended for like an interview type setting or a presenter who might, 
be standing behind a podium or something like that. But in, and by no means, I'm saying that this is horrible performance. This is doing a good job. Once it tracks me, look at how quickly it focuses. And it doesn't really matter how fast I'm moving around the frame, it's still sticky. But face priority just seems to do it that much quicker in the default settings. So the 15 to 35 is also an awesome lens. And I think one of the common things that we're going to see here with all of these tests is that these RF lenses are noticeably sharper, right? And the contrast on them is really, really pleasing. So I'm, I obviously I'm liking these RF lenses and what's maybe a not so positive thing um, on the back end of this test is that now I want more RF lenses, which really means my pocketbook is going to start to uh, shiver just a little if I'm going to start buying Canon Prime RF lenses. But it's all good because this is actually was really, really useful for me to understand these differences and then also where it is that I might want to be moving forward, you know, as I build out my kit for 2021. So let's take a look at this 24 to 105 f4 RF lens. We're going to start at 35 millimeters. And here you can see my exposure. Of course, I'm at f4 because I am at f4. The light source is directly behind the camera, which is why my exposure goes up the closer I get to the actual lens. And of course, I'm starting with 35 millimeter because that is what we tested with both the prime and the 15 to 35. But one thing you're going to notice, and granted, there is more depth of field. So there's more that's in focus with this lens. This lens does an incredible job at being sticky with the autofocus. I was really impressed. You see me even walking by the frame or across the frame rather, it is tracking me. This is one of the reasons why the 24 to 105 is one of my favorite all time RF lenses, period. Out of every lens that I've tested at this point with the Canon C70 in autofocus, I don't care if it's face priority, or if it's face only, this lens outperformed them all. I just zoomed into 50 millimeters so that you can see a better, you know, more separation between me and the background and still see that level of performance. So this is the one time that it kind of was like, what are you trying to do? And it expanded the autofocus area. But check this out, pop back in, it's on me. I can move in close. It's on me. I can step back. It just sticks with me. This lens, the performance of this lens is really impressive. It's the most impressive out of all of the lenses that I've tested thus far. And even at F4, and here you see I'm, I just jumped up to 105 millimeter. It does a good job of separating me against the background. And it does a really good job with color, contrast, and my movement that is relatively quick given where I'm at in the frame. And look at how quickly it locks back into me when I come back into the frame at 105 millimeters. Like this lens really shouldn't be an option. Like I feel like it's underpriced for what it actually is and how well it performs. So my recommendation, of course, would be if you have a camera with an RF mount, you should have this lens in your kit because this lens clearly is punching way above its class. And it is one of the most affordable RF lenses on the market. So let's switch over to face priority. And we're going to see, again, very similar results in that face priority with all the other lenses performs, in my opinion, better than just face only unless you're doing like a static sit down interview type shot. But with this 24 to 105, 
it does a good job in any autofocus mode. And this is why what I mean and why I say that this by far for me would be my confidence checker, right? If I am going to be in a situation where I cannot physically operate the camera, but I'm using it, the C70, as a B cam, this 24 to 105 absolutely will be my go to lens simply because I know that what it should track and what it should focus on, it's going to do the job. I can put it on the slider and have it, you know, go back and forth indefinitely and it is going to stick to the face. I feel like, as I mentioned before, this lens is underpriced for what it can do and how well it performs. And it does a bang up job regardless of the focal length. So we saw 85, we saw 50, we saw 105, and look at the speed at which it tracks. This is just a really good lens. And now, there we go. Recognize my face. Here we go back at 50. And again, the separation is still good, right? Like, not everything needs to be milky in the background, especially when we're doing or working with people. So at f4, I feel like this lens performs really well. And the characteristics, you know, the color rendition is nice. There's no chromatic aberration that I can see. It just works. Like everything works the way that it should be. The contrast is really, really pleasing. The texture on my skin looks like what I see when I look in the mirror. Let's um, go down to 24 millimeters so we can see sort of how it performs at the wide. It just, it's sticky. It's back to, I'm gushing about this lens, but this is why you're going to hear me say in this video that if I had only one lens to pick, this is the lens that I would pick, the RF lens that I would pick to be part of my kit or be used as a B-cam. How about this 24 to 105? Like, the 24 to 105 for me performed incredibly well. The fact that it is an F4, it gives me more depth of field, which also helps, right, in unpredictable situations. So I feel like for live events or things where I know that I cannot control that individual or where that individual is going to start and end, the 24 to 105 gives me that much more flexibility and that much more security. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these tests. Hopefully this was useful to you and hopefully these become some sort of resource so that you can determine which one it is that you're interested. Of course, if you want to see the EF lens test, I'll be sure to put a card up to the playlist so that you guys can go check those out and then figure out which lens you actually want to see, how it performed and compare them against these three. Until next time, I'm Carlos, and I just want to remind you, if you're just visiting the channel and you're not subscribed, it would really help out the channel if you did, because what we're doing here is building a community of filmmakers, content creators, and photographers at different skill levels where we could share content, knowledge, and information so that we can all level up together. And of course, that's important. If you enjoyed this type of content, give it a thumbs up, make a comment, something to let Google know and YouTube know that they should promote this type of content to more people so that we can continue to grow this community. I really appreciate you all. Until next time, I'm Carlos, and I hope you guys have a good Christmas. Take care.